So, all right. So here we have Melinda Fabian with us today. Melinda, can you say hi to everyone? Hi, how are you? How is everybody today? Good. So Melinda is a paper sculptor and I, you know, I mentioned that there's many different things that you can do with paper, but did you know that you can make sculpture out of paper? Now, if you are unfamiliar with what sculpture is, sculpture is any three-dimensional work. So three dimensions means it's not just flat. It's not a paper that goes one direction this way and one direction this way. The third dimension goes this way. So when we talk about sculptures being three-dimensional, there's something you can walk around that has many different sides to it. And paper, as we know it, is two-dimensional. But this is someone who's going to be challenging the way that you look at paper. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to share with you uh, my screen so that you can see um, different pieces that Melinda has done. But as you can see in her video, when she um, comes up on screen, she has some in person too. So as we go along, if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask or you can use the raise your hand feature. All right, so let's get started. All right, just a moment. Okay, here we go. So this is a piece that in, in Melinda's video is actually, you can see it's quite large. So here we have Rusty Dog. And so Melinda, could you tell us a little bit about what this is made of and how you made it? Sure. Um, Rusty is made completely out of paper. And um, what I did is before, I start making things. First, I do some uh, pencil sketches and I uh, want to think about what I want the animal to look like. And then I also start uh, getting some uh, reference photos to uh, see what um, the animal looks like. Uh, so for Rusty, um, what I did is uh, I first did the pencil sketches and then I started to um, create the body of the animal. I had to think about uh, what the body looks like. Um, just like if I were going to draw the animal, you have to think about what the shapes look like of the body of the animal. So then I started to create that form in paper. And uh, it's just paper. And I uh, use paper and glue to make the body. And then I start cutting lots and lots of little pieces of paper. And that's what I uh, use for the fur. The fur of the animal is also just made out of paper. Uh, once I put all the paper on the animal, then I uh, paint him in watercolor and gouache. And gouache is just like an opaque watercolor paint. That's what gouache is. Yeah, but he's all made out of paper and he's, I wanted him to look uh, soft and fluffy. So I hope that's what he looks like. Well, everyone, if you look very closely as I've zoomed in here, you can see what Melinda was talking about, which is how she cut little tiny piece. All of these little hairs are little pieces of paper. So if you imagine cutting paper really, really thin close together, that's all of the hair of the dog. And we have some other animals too like this dog, which I think is a favorite of many people's. Uh, this is a corgi. So this corgi is also made completely of paper. And you can see here how it also has that same effect of cutting little, little tiny pieces of paper to make the fur. And you said that you used watercolor and gouache, which is kind of like a watercolor to get your colors here. But right. what about the inside of the because this is quite a big piece. Right. How do you make the inside of the animal? Well, for the inside of the animals, um, it's just pieces of paper. So I uh, construct like the, what the body would look like of the animal. Like think about like what the skeleton of the body looks like. And I start to shape and form that. And then um, I just keep building it up until I have the shape down and uh, like for the corgi and the dog, I wanted to make sure that they could stand. So I, um, you know, had to make sure it was structurally sound and, and could stand. And uh, really, once that is done, then uh, I just go ahead and start attaching the fur. Yeah. So it's almost like compressing paper together. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So if everyone at home, if you if you've ever had a piece of 
paper that you were working on, you were writing something and you didn't like what you wrote and you crumped it up all the way, you can compress it and make a ball out of it. So if you keep doing that with lots and lots of paper, you're going to be able to build a form. And so that's what she's done here in the shape of a corgi. So we actually have a fun thing to think about today because Melinda has a question for all of you. And um, artists oftentimes have lots of lots of decisions to make. So think about when you're doing a drawing or a painting, you are always thinking about what's next. How do I do this? How, what color do I want to use? What is the shape of the sun I'm going to portray? Even if we know it's a circle, you know, do we want to put it also in the corner? Do we want to put it in the center? There's tons of decisions artists get to make. And Melinda has a decision to make with this piece, the dog that we saw as the first slide, in regards to the tongue. So I'm going to stop sharing so that Melinda, you can share them, share Sorry. with them. So, <laughs> Would so you like is... to propose your question to the group? Absolutely. And thank you so much. Um, this is Rusty right here, the one that you've been seeing in the pictures. And um, yeah, a lot of times, like Gabrielle was saying, when you have, as an artist, you do have questions that come up. And sometimes, you know, uh, I'll go and ask other people for their opinions and suggestions of what they think of my piece as I'm working on it. So I need your help. And I was wondering, here's uh, Rusty, and he has his little tongue sticking out. But do you think it would be better if he doesn't have his tongue sticking out, if he's just sitting there with his smile on with so I was wondering, what, what does everybody think? Do they um, think it's better with or without his tongue? So, so I'm gonna gonna... I'm gonna put a poll up for everyone. Oh, let's see if I can if I can uh, get this going. All right. All right. So let's see. So I think this uh, poll should have come up on your screen and screen in just a moment. And you can vote yes or no. And um, what I think is really cool about what Melinda has done is she's she made the tongue, but it it can come out if she needs it to. Right, so right. she can have it work either way. So we've got one vote so far for the dog should have the tongue. And we can see um, as we go on if other people want to vote what what we come up with. Okay, <laughs> All right. that's great. So let's go ahead and continue with our the works that we're going to see from Melinda because we also have a cat for all the cat lovers out there. I I love both. I love dogs and cats, but I do have a cat at home and um, my cat uh, looks a little bit like this, but a little more brown. And I really like how you have the paw hanging up just a little bit. Um, so when you're looking at creating something realistic, meaning that it looks like a dog or a cat. Um, what do you look at? Do you look, do you think about it in your imagination or do you look at something and try to make it look like that? Uh, yes, I, first I think I, I do sort of think of it in my, in, in my imagination. I'm very familiar with cats because I've grown up with cats. So I, I kind of know how they interact and they play. They're very playful. Uh, so that really helps me with this, uh, kitty cat and um, yeah so I think about what how they how they behave and play and then I start sketching them um, I'll do lots of pencil sketches and try to decide well do I want them to just be standing or jumping uh, with this little cat here I thought maybe uh, he might be playing with like a little toy maybe a mm. little ball or a toy that he might be playing with mm -hmm. and um, so that's why I have his little paw and just to I also wanted to give them a little bit of a feel of motion uh, instead of just standing still. Like Rusty is the, the dog, he's just standing still like keeping watch. Uh, where this little cat, I wanted him to be more uh, interactive and playful. That's great. So um, just as a note, the results of the poll have come in and it is unanimously okay. decided that the dog should have a tongue sticking out. Oh, perfect, <laughs> excellent. That's good to know. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> So as you can see um, in Melinda's setup, she has lots of different things um, around her. And so um, if I stop sharing so we can see that, um, you have a wall in the back, you have lots of different things in the front. Can you describe what we're going to see at Strathmore and the big project you're working on? 
Right. It is a big project. This is the largest project I've ever done uh, with paper sculpture. And um, it's, it's called um, Charming Victorian Country Garden Retreat is what I'm calling it. So it's going to be a beautiful setting. Uh, when you enter the scene, you'll see some wisteria flowers and some other types of flowers, flower gardens with tulips and peonies and a variety of flowers. And then you'll see a, a front porch with uh, the back with the wall of a house. So behind me is a portion of the walls from the house. It looks like bricks and it looks like white siding, but that's actually made out of paper. The siding and the brick, it's paper and paint. So that'll be a small portion of what you'll see in the installation. And then setting on the porch in front of those walls, on, it'll be a porch and setting on the porch will be uh, some of the cats and dogs that you'll see, that you see here. And then also in the installation, you'll see lots of other critters. You might see some ladybugs or mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, some butterflies. Um, I have one here. It's a little oh, it's a nice. butterfly. Uh, so you'll see some of those. So everything will be life size. It will be just as if you are seeing everything in real life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fun thing I hope is that it's also like interactive, like when you're um, looking at the scene, um, you can uh, see if you can find, like maybe I'll have like a game of can you find, so you'll, I'll ask you like, can you find 10 ladybugs or can you find six butterflies? So that I think is also, I hope will be a fun thing as well. It, it'll uh, help you to find different things that I have hidden throughout. That's great. I, I like doing that, I think that's a lot of fun. So we have some of the pieces that will, well, the animals will be there, but just to give everyone an idea. So this is a table that is just the size of a normal table, but it's made out of paper completely. And you can see the paper spiral to make this effect that you might see on a real table. We also have a chair, which I don't think you can sit in this chair. Is that correct? No, it's just for decorative purposes, right? Right. But right. it is so, almost life. But it's almost life size, right? Right. Right. So it is life size, and then you know it is made out of paper, so we don't recommend it. We nobody oh. will be sitting in it. <laughs> uh, but um, everything will be so um, immersive, and immersive means that you come into this world and you everything is it fits perfectly. Um, so, but with everything made out of paper how much paper did you use to, are you using to make these life-size pieces? That is a really, really good question. And um, hmm, I'm not exactly sure. I think I'm going to have to go back and look at that because I do think that's a really interesting question. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's a piece. Um, would we say it's more than a typical pack of computer paper? Well, for Rusty, for Rusty the dog, yes, I would say it's definitely more than a pack of computer paper. Thank you. But then for little things like, um, you know, the desserts, for instance, that maybe took just so uh, maybe like four sheets of computer paper, perhaps. Mm. And we have some of the desserts here for everyone to see. So these, again, are all made out of paper but they still make me hungry. I'm sure they would not taste very good, but they look like they would taste good. So we have all sorts of desserts here. Um, so when you were, um, again, were these desserts crafted from your imagination or were they inspired by desserts you've had in the past? Uh, some were inspired by desserts I've had. And then I was also looking through, you know, cookbooks and things like that for inspiration. And uh, I wanted to make them real decorative and, and fancy. So yeah, a lot was just from my imagination. Uh, like that one, I, I was imagining like a rose uh, icing for the top mm. that, you, that you often see. Uh, yeah, so do you imagine the flavors too? <laughs> right, yeah, I did actually. I was thinking strawberries and that one would, would be raspberry flavored with a lemon cake. <laughs> Ooh, yummy. Yes, I see the lemon here. <laughs> Right. And so you have different, definitely different techniques that you use here. We have lots of little cut up pieces that look like the texture of cake. Um, but we also see some folding and cutting. Um, so how did you get into this? What are, um, what, what was the, the beginning of your interest in working with paper? 
Well, I always liked working with paper. When I was a teenager, I actually um, made paper quilling and uh, did different craft shows. And then I went off to college and I started, after college, I started illustrating for children's magazines and publications. And um, as my work progressed, it, and oftentimes as an artist, you, you're, you're always growing and progressing as an artist. And eventually I decided I wanted to see if I could combine the, my two favorite things, which is illustrating and watercolor and gouache and also paper. And I wanted to see if I could um, make paper three-dimensional. And I like the concept of having a flat picture and making it come out of the, of the paper. So that's where I sort of began. And um, I just really love working with the paper and making the three-dimensional animals and things. Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. So here we have um, a piece called Ruffled Feathers because we see lots of feathers on this beautiful flamingo. And cutting is something you do in so many of these pieces. Do you use special scissors to cut your paper? I have a lot of different um, cutting tools and scissors, um, a lot of different sizes of scissors and things that I use. But um, yeah, I mean, if it's something that you want to try at home, I mean, you can just, that's the one nice thing with paper sculpture. You can just... Uh, try making things with the things that you have at home, paper, glue, and scissors. And some of these are really, really small. Um, this one is only about, you know, it's less than the size of your hand. So how do you work when you're working so tiny? Do you use any special tools for that? No, it's actually the same tools. It's still just um, scissors and, uh, once in a while, I might use an X-Acto knife, but I prefer using the scissors and glue. And I do use a small piece of uh, a small scissors uh, usually, uh, but yeah, it's usually the same. And once in a while, I might need to use a magnifying glass, but um, yeah, it's just the same concept as the larger pieces, but just littler. <laughs> and um, for those who don't know, an X-Acto knife is um, like a tiny, tiny, tiny little knife that's very thin, so it can cut very, precisely and cut details into paper. So um, what's really exciting about these is it looks like, you know, a traditional painting, um, but now you have it coming to life where you have these three dimensional pieces coming out at you. Um, so with your watercolor, what you use to, to give the color to all of your pieces, did you ever do watercolor paintings um, flat? Just, just, Yes. You know, without the sculpture? Yeah, definitely. Um, for my illustration work for that I did, I, I did a lot of um, watercolor paints, painting and gouache painting. So it was all flat illustrations. And then um, they would be, you know, printed in a magazine. But that was all flat, uh, flat work, yeah. Great. Well, I just want to uh, let everybody know that we've got 10 minutes left. So if you do have a question, please feel free to raise your hand like this, use the raise hand feature with a button or type your questions in the chat. Um, but I certainly um, have a question while we wait for anybody to um, send theirs in. Um, and it's, do you have a favorite piece that you've created so far? I think probably my favorite one is this uh, cat. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably this one is probably my favorite. And I guess maybe because I, like I said, I've always grown up around cats, so maybe I'm, it's just, you know, something I'm familiar with. And he looks kind of like some of the cats that we've had in the past. Um, my, uh, we have a tabby cat now, so yeah, it reminds me of that. But, and he was a lot of fun to make. And um, I think, I think by adding the whiskers, I always feel like that gives the cats, uh, you know, the, that last little detail and adds character to their faces. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, and with making the cat, how long did it take you? Um, the cat took probably about uh, three weeks, two and a half, three weeks, I would say. Yeah. It's a long yeah, time. They time. <laughs> yeah, they take time. <laughs> and so how long, so you've been um, planning for our exhibition coming up. So how long have you been working towards this goal? It's actually been a year long project. It's a, uh, been a long time that I've been working on it because it's a lot of pieces. And um, that's one of the other interesting things I think is that everything is being, being built in pieces and then it will be all brought together at Strathmore 
in one location and, and then it will all be built and to create that one scene. So I think that's kind of a, a neat part of the process as well, you know, building all these individual pieces to make it into one whole il illustration or installation. Absolutely. And just a reminder for everyone, the show is called Paperworks and it's going to be opening the day after Labor Day in September. So um, when we get back, we're going to have some special instructions for how to come in so we can all stay safe. Not as many people will get to see the work at the same time, um, but you can come in and and just completely immerse yourself in this wonderful world of paper that Melinda has uh, crafted for you. So you're working on something now. Would you like to tell us about that? Sure. Um, this little bunny rabbit is the thing that I'm working on now. As you can see, it's all in white paper except for his eyes. And um, so this is how he starts out. I, I formed the body first mm -hmm. underneath, and then I started to add the paper and he's all furry now. Uh, and then my next step will be to start painting him. And I just use, you know, small little brushes. I don't know if you can see them very well, mm -hmm. but small brushes. And I'll just start to paint him next. Amazing. So somebody asked, how much paperwork do you make? So how, how many pieces do you, do you typically make? Um, how many are you making for the show? Um, it's hard to say how many I'm making for the show because there's so many flowers. I'll have a lot of flowers at the show. Uh, there's a lot of wisteria, which is one of my favorites, and there's lots of tulips and roses. Um, and then for the animals, there's probably about, I'm, I'm going to just guess maybe, well, the animals that you see here, there's probably, there'll be a few others as well. So. Quite a bit. A lot. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> and the Someone animals else. take a long time to make, so. Someone as asked, um, have you shown your work in other countries? No, I never have. No, nope. Well, maybe in the future, because they would be yeah, pretty, never know. <laughs> pretty, pretty light to ship, I would imagine, that you would, you would save some money on. Uh... <laughs> right, on I actually weighed the bunny rabbit uh, just a little while ago. I was just curious, and he, he weighs about a half a pound. I was just curious how much he weighs. But then Rusty the dog, he weighs quite a bit. He's, he might be about 10 pounds. Oh, yeah. wow, that's oh. more than I would, that's more than I yeah. expected. Yeah, but, but I mean, usually, you know, it's, it's fairly light, though. Like, but smaller things are, are pretty light in weight. Yeah. Someone asked, are your creations hollow on the inside? No, they're all, they all have structure underneath. I, I, um, I prefer that they have structure because um, I feel like it makes it a little sturdier for transporting it. You know, other, if it were hollow, I'd be afraid that it would just collapse. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want to keep it a structure underneath. And I like keeping it all paper inside, paper and glue. I don't use any wires inside. Um, that way, um, it's just something that I like to do. I like to keep it all paper. All paper. Almost it's, it's kind of like steep. how, how um, uh, bakers, when they decorate their cakes, they try to make it all edible, right? right. It's, it's mm -hmm. keeping true to the, the materials you're using. Right. Somebody asked, how do you make eyes? The eyes, um, for that, I, they're made separately. So, um, for example, for the rabbit eyes, I made the eyes separate. And uh, sometimes I have to do that quite often. Um, sometimes I have to make many different sets of eyes, and that usually is what happens. I make many different sets until I um, have the right size, like one, one might look really the perfect size and then the second one I make it might be a tiny bit too small so I have to you know just keep making more of them <laughs> which is kind of a funny process in itself my desk looks a little funny then but um, <laughs> so I, I will paint the and so once I make the shape out of white paper again uh, then I, I go ahead and I paint them and that's something again where you have to you know try your best to get them the same so I'll, I'll paint one first and then I have I'll hold that one next to the second eye and that way I'm painting them at the, you know, I can see the other one side by side so I can get it as close to exact as possible. Yeah, I imagine if you had two separate sizes of, sizes of eyes, it would look a little funny. Right, and sometimes what happens is you, you paint them, you really like them, and then you put them inside the critter space and you realize that, oh, it should be a little bit bigger, a little smaller, then you gotta do it again. But that's, you know, that's just how it goes. That's, that's part of being an artist, right? It just, 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just have to practice and keep working at it, but you know, you get it, you just keep trying. So someone also asked, did you make those? I imagine all of the pieces on your table and it, and as I can see, I imagine that there really isn't anything that isn't paper in front of you, correct? <laughs> correct, correct. They're all, they're all the paper things. Yep. These are the little desserts that you saw on the screen earlier. That's mm-hmm. one of the, that's like a, a red velvet cake is what I was imagining. And then uh, you have the corgi over here and up here's a squirrel uh, mm-hmm. with some wisteria flowers. Yeah, here's another little flower with a, a butterfly up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you're painting them, um, you're using watercolor, which is, is I mean, obviously it's wet. It has water in it. So right. um, do you have to be careful about how much paint you put on the pieces so you don't um, essentially, you know, make the paper wither away? Right. Yes, you definitely have to be careful with that. Um, sometimes if, if you do add too much water, like when I'm doing the cat, the fur, if you add too much water, it can become uh, too matted uh, looking. So then uh, you do have to be a little bit careful. It takes some practice and, you know, the more often you paint the items that are paper sculpture, just like anything else, the more often you practice, whether you're a pianist or a soccer player or something, uh, you know, you get better every time. So. Yeah, it takes time and practice, you know. But yeah, that's definitely true with watercolors. You have to be very careful of that. Someone asked, if you use watercolor for the cat, how do you put the watercolor on the stripes? So how did you make the stripes on the cat? For the cat, for the stripes, I just kept uh, doing more uh, layers of darker colors and using my brush to make the stripe pattern. So you're not necessarily um, taking your brush and drawing a line. You're doing lots of little tiny brush marks. Right, I'm using different right, brush strokes to make the, the stripe. Um, great. Someone also asked, what type of paper do you use? That's a great question. I use all kinds of different varieties of paper depending what I'm working on. So it's, it's a lot of different varieties. And uh, with paper, I think you just have, to, there's a lot of different kinds out there, as I'm sure you probably all know, there's like thin paper and heavier papers. So it's really just a matter of, um, practicing and trying what, what you like to, to use to make the different things. Sometimes you might want a heavier piece of paper, sometimes thinner. It just depends on, you know, what you want to make and, and what works for you. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you. I, we're approaching the end of, um, of our time together here. But I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us. Um, this, you know, this is a great opportunity to meet an artist, even if it's not in person. And I'm so happy that we got lots of your questions answered. But if you have any more questions, I'm going to put our um, email address at Strathmore um, in the chat. Um, so you can always have a parent reach out to us um, and give us your questions and I can connect you with the artist, Melinda. Um, so, and then that leads me to saying thank you so much to you, Melinda, for um, participating today and sharing your artwork with us. We can't wait until you're thank going you to so much. draft more with everything to show uh, what you've created. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate uh, taking the time uh, and for Strathmore to invite the artists for the art talks. I think it's, uh, it's so nice of, of you to do that. And I appreciate everyone for stopping by and, and, yes. and checking it out. So thank you so much, everybody. And thanks for answering thanks. my survey too. That yes, thank, thank you, everyone. So I see people, I see people waving. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank uh, we'll you. See you. Next time, check us out in a couple more weeks. Um, not next Friday, the next Friday, we'll have another one ready for you. Um, so join us to talk with the next artist. All right, bye. Bye.